Alright everyone, Cowboy Traders here, welcome to the channel and welcome to the educational series. In this video I'm going to be explaining what calls and puts are in the options market and I'll also be showing you how I incorporate this data into my S&P 500 analysis from a trader's perspective. So let's get the fundamentals out of the way first. What are options? Well, simply options are financial instruments that give the owners of the option the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying asset at an agreed upon price and date. For the examples we'll be talking about in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the S&P 500. And if this definition doesn't seem 100% clear right now, it will be more clear when we give a worked example later. So what are the two types of options? Well, these are no Known as calls and puts. If you're buying a call, you're betting on the price going up. And if you're buying a put, you're betting on the price going down. Options also have expirations. And when it comes to calls and puts, you can think of them as the option market equivalent of a take profit or a stop loss respectively. Options contracts can also be thought of as insurance. And just like other kinds of insurance, you have to pay a premium to be insured. This is also known as hedging your risk. So for example, if you're buying an S&P 500 put option because you believe the price is going to decrease and you want to hedge against that risk you will pay a premium for that option that option will also have an expiration date so you'll be betting that the price will decrease enough to cover the option premium and make profit before the expiration and just like normal insurance the longer you hold the expiration the higher the premium now let's talk about the strike price the strike price simply tells you at what price you can buy in case of a call or sell in case of a put the underlying security before the contract expires so let's talk about an example of this and this will make it a lot more clearer. So we'll give one example of a call and one example of a put and show how options traders can profit off both of these. Now, once again, remember call traders are expecting that the price is going to go up and put traders are expecting that the price is going to go down. Let's say like we talked about before, we're talking about the S&P 500. Let's give a flat round number. Let's say the market price of the S&P 500 right now is trading at $4,000. And to make things simple, let's also just say that you're going to take out a call or a put at the valuation of $4,000 and you'll be paying a premium of $500 whether you're purchasing the call or the put. So let's give an example of how a call trader uh, would make profit in this scenario. So once again, let's say the market price is at 4,000. An options trader has just purchased a call at the valuation of $4,000 for $500 and he's expecting the price is going to go up. Now, the price does go up before his expiration. The price actually goes up to $5,000. So how much has this call trader profited from purchasing this call at $4,000? Well, the profit formula for calls are down here. This is the new market price minus the market price minus the premium. So what we've got over here is the new market price is 5,000. And then we're going to take away the original market price. This was 4,000. And then we're gonna take away the premium that is $500. And you'll see, of course, 5,000 minus 4,000 minus 500 is going to be a positive figure of 500. Meaning this call trader purchased a call at 4,000. The price went up to 5,000. He paid a $500 premium. And after that, he was left with $500 profit. Now, let's say we've got another options trader who thinks the price is going to go down. The market price is still at 4,000 and he purchases a put at the strike price of 4,000 and he's going to pay a premium of $500 for this. Now let's say that the price does fall down just like he anticipates. The price falls down to $3,000. So what is the put trader's total profit? Well, the formula is slightly different for the call trader because of course the call trader makes money when the price goes up. The put trader makes money when the price goes down. So the formulas are slightly different. If you're looking at the formula for profit in the put market, you'd be looking at the original market price. So this is 4,000 minus the new market price. The new market price is 3,000. And then of course, minus the premium. So what we've got here is 4,000 minus 3,000 minus 500. This is going to be a positive profit of $500. So 
This is just a quick and simple example of how call and put traders make profit in the market. Now, I myself don't trade options, but as a trader, I like to incorporate data from the options market into my technical analysis. I find that if you are a trader, looking at what's happening in the options market, even if you're not trading it, uh, can just be another trick up your sleeve to better navigate these markets. So now I'm going to show you from a trader's perspective how even if you're not an options trader, you can have a better understanding of what's going on in the market and have a slight edge over other traders. Now, before we dive into the TA chart, I want to show you this website over here. I will leave the link to this website with this interesting call and put bar chart down below in the description. When you first load up the website, it's going to look like this. I like to click the volume graph button and then click the volume. So we're going to be sorting the calls and also the puts by the total amount of volume. What this does is this just shows us where the most amount of volume is centralized around the strike prices. Call buyers are expecting the price to go up and they've currently purchased calls round about the strike prices. And they're of course expecting the price to rise beyond this level. And if we come down to the put level, you can see Put buyers are mostly centralized around this $4,100 strike price. And they're, of course, expecting the price to go beneath this level so they can sell at $4,100. So which market should you believe? Well, an interesting thing you can do, if you scroll down to the bottom of the chart, you can see two different things. You can see the put to call volume ratio and the put to call open interest ratio. Now, normally these are slightly different from each other. For example, put to call ratio is right now at 0.99. So it's basically at one, meaning there's not much difference between the volume in puts and calls at this moment in time. But if we look at the put to call open interest ratio, we can see this is much higher right now at about 2.78, which basically shows us that the interest for puts is almost three times larger than the interest for calls at this moment in time. This reflects the options traders expectations for the market. And as the put to call ratio is almost at three, the higher the put to call ratio or put to call volume is, the more bearish it is. And the lower it is, the more bullish it is, because basically there's far more interest right now in puts than there is for calls. And opposingly, if we saw this at say something like 0.5, this would mean that the interest for calls is double the interest for puts. So traders would be expecting a rise in the market. Also, one final detail I want to talk about with the call and put walls is something that I like to call a sticky call or a sticky put wall. Basically, all you need to know is if you've been looking at this chart for a very, very long time, and by a very long time, I kind of mean in the span of months, if you're witnessing the strike wall remain at the same level and not increasing, this is typically a bearish sign because it shows that call buyers are currently weak and they're not willing to push the strike price up higher. And in terms of the put wall, if you see the strike price remain at the same price for months and it doesn't start to decrease, this shows weakness in the strike wall because it shows that put buyers aren't, you know, bearish enough that they want to push the strike price further to the downside. Now, if we come over to an example of how you can use this in your own analysis, besides looking at this bar chart, uh, if you have a Bloomberg terminal, you can have a very interesting chart where you can look at the options sentiment, look at the put to call skew, and also the put to call open interest. But I understand not everyone has, you know, 30,000 a year to spend on the Bloomberg terminal. So what I'll do is I'll show you a free indicator on TradingView where you can get a similar chart to this, not as good as a Bloomberg terminal, of course, but this is a free resource that you can get over on TradingView. So I recommend using this on the weekly time frame when you're looking at the accumulated put to call ratio. It's much better to look at it on a higher time frame, in my opinion. So how do you get this indicator? Well, if you come over to the indicators tab at the top and type in this accumulated put to call ratio, you can see these two community scripts. There's the accumulated put to call ratio and the put to call ratio V2. I personally prefer using the V2 one, but you can load both of these up if you want. Uh, the original one has more data traded. I just find that the V2 is a little bit more accurate.
As you can see, if we put some vertical lines on the screen, when the accumulated put to call ratio increases, this shows that there are far more puts in the market. And as you can see, this often correlates to market tops. And when you see the accumulated put to call ratio bottom out, it's often a sign that the bottom is in. Now, bear in mind, this doesn't work 100% of the time on this screen. We've got about five or six data points if you wanna consider these ones. Now, five out of six times it worked out. On the sixth time right here, you can see it didn't work out. So options traders aren't always gonna be 100% accurate. This is why we can't only rely on the options market. This is just another trick up our sleeve to better navigate the market. So for this video, that's all I've got. If you did enjoy the content, make sure to let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment, share the videos with your friends. Do also bear in mind, if this did help you, this is only one educational episode out of an entire series, which currently has 38 episodes episodes, everything from securities laws, tokens versus coins, talking about market caps, fully diluted market caps, how to use multiple trading view indicators, Fibonacci's, Elliott Wave Theory, what you're watching now, divergences. I basically cover it all for free in this educational series. You can find this by simply coming over to my channel, clicking on the playlists and finding the educational series. For this episode, that's all I've got. I'm out. Peace.